hungry fighters. This is really kind of the last hurrah for Alejandro Hernandez. He's in a very familiar role tonight here in the city of Chicago, and that is the role of traveling underdog. But he did win the dress-up contest. He comes in on something of a role. He's won four or five fights. That, since his 16-month hiatus from the sport, this will be his third shot at winning a championship. And tonight, he feels that he is ready. He comes off a unanimous win, unanimous decision win, that is, over Daniel Rosas. That earned him tonight's shot. 15 years of professional. He's kind of had to learn on the job. Very short amateur career. They call him Payasito, the little clown. But tonight, little clown Steve is all business. Let's talk about the keys to victory for Hernandez. Well, Barry, for Hernandez, he is the lighter puncher. He can't present a stationary target and invite exchanges. When he jabs, Hernandez brings his left back very low. That's an invitation for a counter right from Kameda. And Hernandez has a habit of rhythmically moving his hands up and down. He needs to keep them up. Gentlemen, the action continues here at the UIC Pavilion in Chicago, Illinois, with 12 rounds of boxing, and it will be for the WBO Bantamweight Championship of the World. Brought to you by Warriors Boxing in association with All Star Boxing, Producciones Deportivas, Box Promotions, and Showtime, along with their great sponsor. Picrea, Servicios Financieros, sanctioned by the Illinois State Athletic Unit, along with the World Boxing Organization, President Francisco Valcarcel, Supervisor tonight, John Duggan. Our three judges scoring on a 10-point must system will be Bill Lurch, Dennis Nelson, and Michael Pernick. When the bell rings, our referee in charge, the third man in the ring will be Gino Rodriguez. Introducing to you first the challenger fighting tonight out of the blue corner. He's wearing red with gold and black and weighed in at 118 pounds. Coming to us from Mexico City, Distrito Federal, Mexico. He brings a professional record consisting of 28 wins, 10 defeats, two draws, with 15 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Alejandro El Payasito Hernandez. 
and his opponent across the ring. He is the defending champion fighting tonight out of the red corner. He's wearing white with pink and weighed in at 117 and a half pounds. Fighting out of Mexico City, Distrito Federal Mexico, by way of Tokyo, Japan. He is undefeated with 30 wins. 19 of his wins come by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the reigning and defending WBO Bantamweight Champion of the World, Tomoki El Mexicanito Gameda. Okay, guys. Hey, for the Hey, Gameda. Campeón. Cameda. Trae, trae Cameda para acá. Dale para acá, dale para acá, dale para acá. Ok, caballero. Recibieron sus instrucciones en calidad. Obedezca mis instrucciones todo el tiempo. Protéjense todo el tiempo y suerte a los dos. Faster, taller, and longer. And if Fernandez wants to give himself even a chance to win, he's gonna have to be the aggressor, throw a ton of punches in this tiny ring. The rules, the unified rules, no standing in, no three knockdown rule, only the ref can stop the fight. The fight can't be saved by the bell in the ground, and the fight becomes official after four rounds are complete, Barrett. All right, with that, we are set to go. This for the WBO Bantamweight Championship, but even more importantly, I think for Kameda, a chance to really shine here in the United States. He was planning on moving from Mexico to Las Vegas. And he says, I want to be a superstar here in the United States. Not just a star, mind you, <laughs> but a superstar. And he's got the goods. And I think he's got the clothing to yes, fans yes. in Las Vegas as well. I don't know who invented color television, but they had to monkey come in. <laughs> Absolutely. You have a pair of shirts like that. Right? I do. So far, uh, he's put on a good show at the beginning. The entrance is, I like it. Well, his brother was on the card earlier tonight and uh, showed some great hand speed and a lot of talent in an easy win. We'll see if Tomoki can pick up where he left off. Yeah, you know, one thing I just saw, he made up jamming from too far away. He has a habit of doing that. It's very dangerous because if his opponent steps in with the right hand, he can be clocked. Yeah, you gotta trust his instincts a little more when he gets close. On the other hand, Hernandez is pretty much a stationary target right now. Now he tries to jab his way in. Very tight defense by Hernandez, keeping his gloves up. Both of them shots are landing on Hernandez's gloves. He's a rugged veteran. I mean, this guy's the type of guy that. Made him, he's gotten better from his losses. And when I see that high guard of Hernandez, it reminds me of Hernandez's last fight when he took out Singu with a left hook to the body. That body, that right side of Hernandez's body is open for that left hook. Where's that very quick hands to your side? Crank that left hook. Yeah, he's got a, like, an electrifying jab. I mean, he knows how to work it up and down. He's very relaxed in there. He's poised. He's taking his time. Well, he said he, he went to Mexico to try to learn the Mexican style of fighting. He doesn't really fight like so much like a Mexican fighter, though. But... No, I think he's more like a long-range fighter. And he uses uh, the speed, fight from the outside. But like I said, when he hurts you, he, he goes in for the kill. Yeah, good finisher. He's a good personality. He's got, he's got all the makings. You know, I, I never remember a Japanese fighter becoming a real star in, in the West, but with TV exposure, if he can fight a higher quality of opposition, he can do it. And he's got a style that, that should be pleasing. Busy fighter. Quick, get a very quick smile.
どないやあの距離感あれやったらあれやからバタンやからもう一度取れる気持ちでいけよのピアノのピアノのピアノピアノのピアノのピアノのピアノのピアノのピアノのピアノのピアノこれで。
to take on former light middleweight champ Ishe Smith. Laura versus Smith, Friday, December 12th at 10.15 p.m. Only on Showtime and Showtime Anytime. Showtime Championship Boxing returns with an electrifying triple header. Headlined by Amir Khan versus Devin Alexander, plus Keith Thurman and Demetrius Andrade. Khan versus Alexander, Saturday, December 13th, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, only on Showtime and Showtime Anytime. Back to back nights of boxing on Showtime, December the 12th, the 13th. A little Christmas present, a little holiday present Absolutely. for everybody. Yeah, Good cards. Ishe Smith, one of the Showbox favorites, will challenge Aris Landy Lara. Lara's first fight since uh, that close decision loss, a controversial decision loss to Canelo. In San Antonio, great fight town. We'll be doing that, and then the next night, can't wait for those fights. Amir Khan Devin Alexander is a very critical fight at 147. And the return of Thurman, can't wait to see him again. It's the fourth round. Tomato and Hernandez. And again, Tomato starts out in close quarters and gets them a couple of shots. Now they're just hand to hand, and this is not Tomato's choice. This is where Hernandez wants to fight, but Kameda's getting the better of him. So, I mean, that's Hernandez is fighting, but you, you're right, he just, he's not busy enough. I don't know if he doesn't want to take any risks. Look, there he is, he's, he's covering that very well, frame defense. Nothing's getting in, really. Kameda needs to look for openings, too. He needs to uh, throw up because down the middle and open up that guard. And you see the power punches. Hernandez, interestingly, with a uh, 34 punch. 
punch advantage, but look at the percentage rate at 17% compared to almost 50% for Kameda. That's why Kameda's winning the fight. Good body shots from Kameda. He did take a left hand from Hernandez. We've all talked about Kameda's hand speed and foot speed. That hand speed enables him to throw three, four punches at a time. Generally speaking, Hernandez answers with only one. Yeah, and that itself is almost enough to win the fight. I'm still giving Hernandez the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he'll step it up after round six, but I'll tell you what, if he doesn't step it up, he's just going to settle for that. I mean, maybe he's just happy to go for a round with Kameda. We'll, we'll be able to tell him after the sixth, seventh round if he doesn't pick up the pace. Because he, he just cover him up. He throws single shots. Showing a pretty good chin. He knew the man's been hurt in this fight. Hernandez yes. switched to Southport briefly yeah. earlier in the round. He does that on the table. So we asked him if he was going to do that in this fight. He said, I don't know. Right. He didn't yeah. tell us if he was going to do that. Set traps for the Mexican fighter uh, Hernandez. Yeah. Right hand just missed from Kamara. Yeah. 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 just continuing to pick the punches of Kamara.
goes a long way. It does go a long way. I think that's got to be in the back of his mind. But it makes it difficult because if Hernandez just goes into a survival mode, and when he goes into survival mode, he's trying to just be there as a puncher back. It makes it a lot harder, harder out there to get him out of this. Yeah, as we said, he's taking the fight to Hernandez. If he thought he was going to the other way, he kind of did. It's a serious challenge for Hernandez to score a knockout because, again, Hernandez, 40 fights, never down. Stopped only once, but Leo Santa was in a fight where Hernandez said he hurt his right elbow. So, this is a tough guy. to see middleweight contender Caleb Truex take another step toward a hope for title shot. He defeated Scott Sigman, who was outmanned, came in here with a 24 and five record, but this one was really never in doubt. Truex just had one of those do what you have to do to win kind of fights, and he wound up with an eighth round stoppage over the overmatched Sigman. So Truex moves on in the middleweight division, runs his record to 26, one and two, and remember the name, he'll be heard from. Trying to make a name for themselves tonight. Looking at one right here in Tomoki Kameda. I don't know if we've already mentioned it, but the Kameda brothers, Daiki, Tomoki, and Koki, the only trio of brothers in boxing history to all have won a version of a world title. And for four months, a couple years back, they held those titles simultaneously. Pretty yeah. amazing. That is amazing. Koki was on his card earlier tonight. It was very impressive in the win, but also over and over matched the point. In Japan, Koki Kameda was basically Elvis, Michael Jackson, and the Beatles rolled into one. Yeah. That's how big a star he was. Now, Smokey, of course, is not because he came to Mexico when he was 15. You see the total number of power punches per round. This is why it's been an easy fight to score. This is a running total. Kameda with an advantage, a fairly significant advantage. And then you That's why I have to fight 5 0. Rounds 50 45. It's pretty hard to see it any other way, I would think. I totally agree. And Hernandez, you know, he, he might be looking at he's good enough to get to a title fight, just not good enough to win it. That's been the case, and you know, you're seeing it again here. And he's a good test for Kameda. If Kameda could get him out of there, knock him out in, in fashion, in a way, in a big way, that's a huge statement, but so far, the rugged veteran uh, knows what to do to survive. They keep telling him in the corner, it's time to let your punches go. Let's see, see no sign of it. Yeah, let's see if Hernandez can do anything from the southpaw stance to switch the game this round. Kometa crowding him, as you said earlier. I mean, that's really the fight that we expected from Hernandez. There's a lunging left hand from Hernandez that did get there. Kometa right on top of him once again. Take a little step back. I mean, he's got longer arms. He needs to make room. But right there's too much on top of him. He's crowding himself. Just back up a little bit, a little bit back. Take a step back. Throw that right up with it. Catch him coming in. I think Hernandez might have actually gotten better at that exchange. He's smothering his punches. Uh, Kameda. He's not getting the best power off of the guy by doing it. You're right, Raul, and it's ironic because when he's outside, he's too far away. And when he's on the inside, he's too close. Okay, so back up a little bit. Bait him with the double, with the jab, and then catch him coming in. And it's just more of same for Kameda. We are 
at the University of Illinois Chicago here in the city of Chicago. It was actually cold and windy. They had 21 foot waves on Lake Michigan last night. I'm Barry Tompkins along with my partner Steve Farhood and El Diamante, Raul Marquez and uh, we're midway through this championship fight, Steve. The halfway mark. Jabs not much of a factor. Hernandez only 13%. When he jabs, it seems like he's doing it like more of a defensive move than an offensive move. But the key, the power percentage is 48% for Kameda, only 16% for Hernandez. And he's not a big enough puncher to take advantage of landing 16% of his power shots. Okay, we see Kameda. I mean, Kameda needs to uh, find a way to get this guy out of there. He's controlling the whole fight. He needs to change up his style a little bit. For Hernandez, he needs to get in the pocket, close the pocket, let his punches go. He hasn't let his punches go. He's got to let him go. All right, we'll see if he can give us any different, anything different here as we move along to round seven. It has been a dominant performance thus far for Tomoki Kameda, even though neither man in this fight has been hurt. There's no knockdowns. Every round has looked pretty much the same as the one prior. And again, Kameda starts out in very close quarters. He started the last three rounds this round. punches in there, but Kameda throws everything in combination. And Kameda seems to turn his body, his hips more on the inside when he punches than Hernandez does. Hernandez kind of arm punches. Kameda yeah, trying to work the body here. That was his key to success his last time. Second half of the fight, guys. If Fernandez doesn't turn it up <laughs> right now, he's, he's not going to win. I don't think he's going to win. Steve, I don't think he's going to happen. Yeah, it probably would have happened already if it was going to happen, right? I mean, they try to motivate him. Like, you got mo good motivators in the corner. They're telling him the right things to do. But this guy doesn't want to take any risks. I think he's going to settle for it. Going to decision. I think he's, trying, I think he's trying a little bit more this round. But again, the best shots are being thrown by Kameda. Even when Hernandez does throw combinations, Kameda's punches are better. Yeah, how do you land? Hernandez lands three or good shots, like you step said, back, baby, but then he backs up. Mexico, age 15, fluent, of course in Japanese, also fluent in Spanish. Learning to speak English now, has a few words in English. Speaks very well Spanish, though. I should go a long way in the, in the boxing world. Yeah, very marketable guy, but... He wants to be a big star, I think he's, you know, a knockout would be great for him. Not putting him down, he's doing everything he can to win. He's winning the fight, he's dominating the fight. Yeah, the idea he's looking for now, it took a left hand from Hernandez there. And he's just more experience, it takes experience, you know, and we know that the, the, the fighters are going to make the changes during the fight. I, I keep saying he's got to back up and let him come in, set traps, bait him in. Well, still to come, our main event, you get a look right now at Andrew Fafara. He is the local favorite, of course, and he will have everybody in this building rooting for him. Came from Warsaw, Poland, just outside Warsaw, Poland. And plenty of, a huge Polish population here. Not so for Dudu and Gumbu. He made his way to France from the Republic of Congo at the age of 15 years. Came there really to play football. Didn't think about boxing. Finally started boxing at 18. This is the second time he's been in the United, in the United States. He was at the wild card gym with Freddie Roach for a short period of time. But to say that he's excited about this opportunity is to make an understatement. <laughs> Very excited. He's been around the world and this is his big chance. He watches Showtime. He watches Homeland. That's right. And we promised him a part in Homeland if yeah, he Yeah, I did, which is probably going to cost me my job no if he wins, But that's all right. I'll tell him I was just kidding. <laughs>
has 74 punches thrown by Hernandez in round seven, the most in the fight. Only landed 15, but it was a close round in terms of connect, 17 to 15 for Kameda. Closest yet. Yeah, you can tell Hernandez is, is trying to get on the gas here, but has not figured out the mystery in front of him. Yeah, I mean, all Hernandez has shown to me is, he's, you know, he's a, a young veteran that has been in tough situations because of the oh, no. caliber of fighters that he fought. And, the, you know, the, the rounds have given him experience and, you know, they're quality rounds for him, and that's why he, you know, he hasn't been knocked out yet by a Cabana. Been a pro for a long time, turned pro at 15 years of age. They both turned pro young, 15 and 60 for Kameda. Kameda's nickname is Mexicanito. El Mexicanito, let me get the pronunciation. I should let Raul handle El Mexicanito, yes. Which Fernandez didn't like, but he feels like he's trying to win over the, the Mexican fans. I don't blame him. Fernandez is a pedacito. <laughs> Little clown. And you see that in round seven, it was the closest yet in terms of connects. Still around, I gave Kameda I have a shutout, and he has a slight edge in the right probably here in round eight. We're going 12. This is for the WBO Batweight Championship of the World. And, uh, this fight has been pretty much one note ever since the opening bell. This round, Kameda using the ring a little bit, moving around. Hernandez a little more aggressive. See, I'd like to see Kameda like that on his toes. On his toes, long jab. Fade him in. Come on. Three good jumps by the whole here. Yeah, that's it. That's good movement. Good lateral movement. Snap that jab. What he's showing, though, I think, is that he can win this one. These rounds, any way he chooses, <laughs> whatever, whatever method he uses. <laughs> yes. Box punch, aggressive, not aggressive. Yeah, winning this one completely with the jab. And maybe starting to frustrate him a little bit. Stan Hernandez coming forward a little bit. And a muggy. Uh huh. gets uh, close, I'd rather see him be the aggressor. Hernandez just doesn't have an answer, no matter what Kameda does. Ahora, sí, ya sintió, pero no quiero que se aviente. Igual como quedamos, él empieza a correr. Y aquí, y acá, pero no te vayas de frente. But don't move just straight forward. Be smart, intelligent. Be very smart in there, Alex. ¿Cómo estás, Alex? How do you feel, Alex? ¿Cómo estás? ¿Qué, qué, qué round viene? ¿Qué round es este? Sí, a toda madre. Eso es lo que yo quería, carnalito. Que se faltara. Entonces, ¿qué es lo que quieres hacer? Son los rounds de la pelea de campeonato, ¿eh? Son los rounds de la pelea de campeonato, ¿eh? ¿Qué me dijiste ahorita? ¿Qué acabo de decir? ¿Qué dijiste? Voy a ganar. ¿Cómo va a ganar, güey? A huevo, a huevo. Entonces, vamos a presionarlo, pero con inteligencia. No quiere nada, pero no quiero que te avientes. Bien cerradito. Y como le quita al final, no lo persiga. Que él venga. Cuatro rounds de campeonato, Alex. Rounds, championship rounds, he's saying. Well, they are that. Let's see if he can figure out some way to get inside of the net. Kameda landed 47% of his power shots. And that was just slipping an uppercut just a moment ago. Kameda waving his hand and wants Hernandez to come in. Hernandez again got the right uppercut. Not a huge punch, but... More activity there by Hernandez. Look it up, look it up, look it up. I think there's a cut. Yeah, they said in the Hernandez corner, you cut him already. Look like uh, left eye, I believe. Kameda, yes. <laughs> yeah, there was some swelling there earlier in the fight. Now a single line of blood, and he is blinking, so it's clearly bothering him. 
And that eye is closing quickly, too. He's never been cut, Kanata, never cut in 30 pro fights. Let's see how that affects this young guy. He's young, never, you've never been cut. Skin in your eye, let's see how he takes that. Some guys, you know, they get cut by a small little cut, they get lost, they don't know what to do. They lose concentration. Well, his activity has slowed for sure. Yeah, it has. Yeah, that eye is not good, but it is. It'll take a knockout by Hernandez, and Hernandez jumps in and does get there with a couple of shots. Hernandez, part of the expression, smelling blood. <laughs> this might be Hernandez's uh, first round that he wins. <laughs> and Hernandez now barking at Pereira to come. Well, this is no time for Hernandez to raise his gloves and play defense. He's got to attack. Forget counter punching. He's got to push Pereira back and attack. Tomato with about eight punches there, none of them got there. And Hernandez reminds him of that. The round that so far was Hernandez. I think Tomato might have gotten hurt. He saw his legs uh, shake a little bit. I'm not sure. I think his eye is closing up too. Yeah, it is. Yeah, they got some work to do. All right. But now it's up to Hernandez to take it. That's part of the entourage of Kameda. You can see that cut right in the wood. It is the kind of cut where blood would get high. It's not a bad cut, yeah. but just the area that it's in, it, it's going to drip in your eye. Well, as Raul and Barry both mentioned, the best round of the fight for Hernandez. Watch as he lands a right hand here. You'll see Kameda, who's already cut, wiping the blood. I mean, that's, that's telling your opponent, I'm troubled by this. And I'm not saying that he can help but doing it, but... And Hernandez should take advantage of that, of course. Yeah. Don't talk, don't pose. Only 33 punches thrown by Kameda. Been right by Low for the fight. Hernandez is going to have to get him out of there to win the fight. And you would hope the corner would know that, Barry, because you're 100% right, and there's no doubt about that. And, and I see Hernandez still in a somewhat defensive posture here. Yeah. Yeah, right now, this is all about Kameda. Well, we made a good point. He's a young fighter. He's only 23 years old. Never been cut before. How does he respond? I think it's bothering him. He's biting. Now, what happens if Hernandez had more power and had, was more determined to put that pressure on him? You know, the type of fight that's going to be in your face. That's just, you know, that's things that he's going to learn. Kameda's going to have to learn him for the future. And Hernandez likes switching to southpaw. It might be a good time to do that because yeah. he can stick that jab Absolutely. on the left side of Kameda's face and make that cut worse. He's well in the action. They're all for Kameda right now. He's very happy to. He starts to bleed again. Completely slowed down in this round. Yeah. He had a, a real good momentum going. 
to open up that cut again. Make the lead again. You know, hey, get a little bit dirty. Tremendous punch out to way, way down. 23 year old Rex coming at you. Yeah, that's it. Episode of the six-time Emmy Award-winning Showtime Original Series, Homeland. And what does this mean, Saul never got on the plane? There's no safe way to get you out of here. We are eyes on three vehicles. There wouldn't be an operation if it weren't for me. So don't treat me like I'm the enemy. Arm. Marking target. What the fuck? Take the shot, goddammit! You murder your brains! Homeland, tomorrow at 9, only on Showtime and Showtime Anytime. And there are some fans going to pull stop. They are here and are waiting for their man. He will be in our main event. They're on hand. We've got another six minutes of boxing here, and we'll see if Hernandez can take advantage of the cut over the left eye of Tomoki Kameda.
al aire, hermano, al aire. Ya no quiere nada, hermano. Espérenme, déjenme hablar. Ale, son tres minutos, hermano. Van a atacar, hermano. De campeonato del mundo, güey. Al aire, espérate, güey. Sí. Quiero que vaya. ¿Cómo te sientes? Hay que ganar ese, tomo por razón. ¡Claro! ¡Eh! ¡Este es el ganador! ¿Usted quiere ser campeón del mundo, carnal? ¿Quiere asegurar el futuro de la vida? ¡Oh, qué cosas! Swelling, first time in his career. Yeah, a change in uh, a change in the momentum of the fight for sure. Just not a change that Hernandez was able to take advantage of to the degree that he needed to. So the 12th and final round here, and uh, clearly Hernandez is going to have to knock his man out if he is going to take this championship. And he's not a committed back off there. He backed off like he might have been hurt. Yeah, he stopped him in his tracks. Hit him again. He's, he's, he's landing with that left hook. Camilla holding on a little bit. One of the first times I've seen him do that in this fight. And he, caused, he caused his own problem by coming out like he wanted to score a knockout here in the 12th. It's as if he's saying, yeah, I do that, but I'm, I'm letting it all go. He keeps looking down. That's the second time he's looked down at his feet. Right, he did. He backed off very quickly. Now, why, why didn't Hernandez do this maybe five or at least five rounds back? I mean, come on, guys. Yeah. You're right, Raul. You're 100% right. It's working. Picked up the activity rate. He's coming forward. He looks like he wants to win. Maybe we need a 15 round fight. I don't know. <laughs> well, clearly, both guys came in here ready to go 12 rounds. Still some gas in the tank, I believe, for both of them. The battle, I would say this is not been an eye-opening performance for Pineda, but largely because his eye was closed. It changed his approach to the fight, for sure. Yeah, I think it did. Still, I think you have to sit back and say, was this, does this fall in the category of impressive performance? And I'm not sure you can say that. No, but uh, he's fighting the guy who's never been down, never been stopped only once because of an injury. Got to take that into consideration. Great dude, I mean, this is a great learning experience for Tomato. I learned a lot from this fight. I mean, he oh, 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 oh. got tested in this oh, round. Oh. Got caught for the first time. That was bothering him a little bit. He got stabbed a couple of times. And that was right back on him. Running out of time now, though, as we head down to a third of seconds remaining here in the final round. He's got his eye. And he's pretty much shut now. Take a look at the uh, top 10 bantamweights 
I'm not going to raise Kameda's stock after that. Uh, it was a win. A win when you're a champion is all that matters. Interesting that his brother, one spot below in my ratings, fought and was very impressed in scoring a stoppage against a much quicker opponent on the undercard here. But again, Kameda has done his part. You'll have to let that eye heal a little bit if Jamie McDonald wins his next fight in a couple weeks. Number four may fight number six in a unification fight in early 2015. That's a fight I'd love to see. Yeah, I would say they may have to push it back just a little bit, though. Talking about that fight early in 2015. All right, let's take it to Thomas Triber now. We will make all of this official with the official decision. Thomas? Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards, and we have a split decision. <laughs> Judge Dennis Nelson scores it 115 to 113 in favor of Hernandez. Judge Michael Pernick scores it 115 to 113 in favor of Cometa. And Judge Bill Lurch scores it 115 to 113 in favor of your winner. And still, WBO Bantamweight Champion of the World, Tomoki El Mexicanito Gameta. So there your winner, Tomoki Kameda, and uh, all three judges had that fight a lot closer, Raul, than the three of us at this table. Yeah, I, I just gave Hernandez uh, maybe two rounds at the most on my scorecard. I think he did, uh, Kameda dominated the, the fight. He, he did enough to win unanimously on my part. I agree 100%. I mean, a couple of rounds maybe for Hernandez, and that's it. He wasn't busy enough. He landed a low percentage of his power shots, and uh, at times, Kameda didn't do a lot himself, but landed a lot more punches for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's very, very surprising. Uh, oftentimes, you can sit back and make a case, but even looking at these numbers, it makes no case. Yeah, the uh, number of power shots and the number of total punches landed much higher for Kameda. And Hernandez, 22% of his power shots. I, I really don't understand what the judges saw. And those are a couple of uh, Michael Pernick, one of the most respected judges in all of boxing. I'm very surprised uh, at the closeness of the scores. Yeah, I am too. And uh, Raul, every now and then, judges see a fight in a very different way than we do. We're all sitting ringside. Uh, and there are the three judges. And I, I, you can't criticize the judges. They all saw it the same way. And we all saw it very different. I mean, uh, you know, the judges are in a different position than from where we are. So they see it at a different angle. But come on, guys. I mean, I think you could see this fight from any angle. And uh, the, the guy was, you know, it's, there's no way. There's no way that uh, Hernandez got all them rounds. And just to give you an idea of the experience of these judges, Bill Lurch, who's a local judge, 32 years of judging. Denny Nelson, 42 years of judging from Minnesota, and Michael Pernick from Florida, 22 years of judging. So these are veteran officials who saw this fight very close. I learned one thing tonight. Never say you need a knockout to win the fight. And I should have learned that years ago. But nonetheless, the guy that uh, everybody thought was going to win the fight, and we thought won the fight lopsided, won the fight. Tomoki Kameda will move on and uh, very likely will have a title shot in his near future. Our main event is coming up next. Andre Fofara, originally from Poland, facing Dudu and Gumbu in front of what's expected to be a very pro-Polish crowd. But first, we want to remind you that Tuesday night is sports night on Showtime.